morning, everyone. All right. Well, um, I keep hearing that people get uncomfortable um, public speaking with public speaking, and I'm definitely one of those people as well. Um, but uh, it's such a such an honor to be here. I wanted to start with a poem compiled by a good friend of mine, Melissa. Always seeking order to find meaning. Who makes up the order? Why subject, object, verb? The rules of meaning, the outline of logic, the lines between you, me, black, white, straight, queer, rich, poor, educated, illiterate, comedy, tragedy, sacred, profane, the lines between them, us, you, me, me, myself. The lines in the sand not to be crossed, the lines to be erased, the lines that don't exist until we pick up the chalk. Yes, all right. So, shout out to Melissa. Um, I am so humbled to be here, and I'd like to thank Kate and Paul and the entire Creative Morning team um, for inviting me here today. Uh, and I, I find myself constantly trying to figure out you know, who I am and what I'm doing with my life. Um, I, and so with that, I feel, I feel that when I'm invited to speak in front of wonderful people like yourself, I'm reminded that I am an artist with a voice. So today, we're talking about taboo. What is it? An activity forbidden or sacred um, based on religious beliefs or morals. And of course, it's subjective. So I started thinking about taboo. What is it? And what are, what are some taboo things that we do in our, in our country? And a few came to mind. Swearing in public or professional setting, being openly religious, talking about these things in public, death, sex, personal finances, how much money do you make? Yeah, no, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Excretory functions. Eating cat or dog meat. Hmm, that's a good one. Picking your nose in public. Staring and pointing at people. Being a pregnant bride. Polygamy. Pedophilia. Abortion. Incest interracial marriage. Some of you may argue that, but when as an artist or as an actor, um, when you see that being cast as, as someone, um, if, I'm, if I'm being cast as a black woman married to a white woman in a commercial, the stir that, it, that happens because of that, you realize that it's still taboo. Even though we see it in our everyday lives, it's not it's not all the way accepted, mainstream. What else? Menstruation, defecation, urination. One of my biggest pet peeves, smacking, <clears throat> eating while talking, and talking about race. Now, some taboos in Wisconsin. Thought about some of those, and maybe some of you guys can help me out with these, too. Talking about your love for the bears. Don't. Don't do it. <laughs> or your hatred for the Packers if you, if you have another team. Uh, my husband, my husband Chi K. Johnson, he's an actor, and we, we lived in Chicago for a little while, and he's a, he's a Packers fan, um, of course, and uh, he was wearing a Packers hat, and this was several years ago. And he went into a store, and they demanded he take his hat off. Um, <laughs> It, it, got, it got pretty brutal. Um, in the end, he took it off. It was a smart choice. <laughs> Another taboo um, in Wisconsin that I've, that I've learned over the last couple years um, is being vegan. Now, I'm sure some of us are vegan here, and we know a lot of them, but I, I wish I could replicate the face that I get when I tell someone that I'm a vegan um, in this state with, with the cheese and the, all, all that stuff. <laughs> Telling a host that their house is dirty or their food is nasty. It's not, it's not really nice, right? Yeah, that's not nice. Um, 
being honest. I've, I'm, from, I'm from Milwaukee, born and raised, and I've learned that when, when I'm honest, it makes people uncomfortable. We're nice people here. We're really, really nice. And sometimes I'm nice to a fault. Um, so so being, being honest sometimes can be taboo. Being angry. What else? Being a black female artist. That, I don't know, to me is the picture of taboo. Being black in the Midwest, in Milwaukee. I grew up in the zip code 53206. Um, one of the most underserved zip codes in the country. But I also live in Milwaukee, which is one of the most, which is the most segregated city in the country. And you have being a female on top of that, forget about it. Um, and being an artist. As an artist, we already do so many taboo things. So I'm a great, I'm a really good cocktail of, of taboo. <laughs> So then as an artist, I thought about what are some artist taboos, some that I've learned. I went to Marquette University for, for theater, and I went to, I was one of those students who was bused to Whitefish Bay um, for, for school from elementary all the way through high school, even though I lived about five minutes away driving from, um, from Whitefish Bay, 53206 is very, very close to, to Whitefish Bay. It was a world apart. And I learned so much um, while at, during my time at Whitefish Bay. Um, I was introduced to theater there and then went on to Marquette to study theater. As an artist or as an actor, you're, you're taught to Never say no. It's yes and. And sometimes that can get a little, a little bit shaky, um, especially when, as a female, you're asked to do something that you're uncomfortable with on screen or um, casting couches are real. Um, talking too much. Uh, asserting your opinion to a director or a producer or a writer um, sometimes you just need to shut up and do the part. Burning bridges. You never want to lose an opportunity for the next gig. Taking time off for yourself. That's a difficult one, but the, as an artist, it's, it's, difficult. it's difficult to take time off because you're losing money, potential money. Um, having children, um, especially more than one, and I was crazy enough to have three of them. Um, and under the age of 30, um, that's almost a no-no for artists. And daring to be yourself. Um, so though, those are a few, a few taboo things that I've thought about as an artist. Um, I want to tell you a story. Um, when I, I was 17, and I was a senior at Whitefish Bay High School. And I was, I, I did theater from middle school and till now. Um, and, and I auditioned for a show, Grease. Anyone heard of Grease? We've all heard of Grease. Um, Grease the musical. And I was, I was so, so excited and I thought it's my senior year and this is my time to, to be you know, put in a lead role. There was that seniority um, factor when it came to casting. And I, ki I killed that audition. I killed it. And after the audition, um, after the uh, casting process, I was pulled into a room. And I was told by the music director, and the, she, she also ran the, the music department at Whitefish Bay, which, was, which is pretty big. Um, I was told that Whitefish Bay was not ready for a Sandy, who was the lead lady. She, they were not ready for a Sandy that looked like me. And that was devastating. And they, you know, I still was in the play. I still was in the show. But hearing that, I, one, I accepted it. And two, it didn't stop me 
but it definitely solidified the difficulty that I would have as, um, as I entered my journey as a professional actor. It sounds really sad, right? <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's really awful, but, but what I've learned is that, is that I, I needed to embrace the fact that I am taboo. Being a black female artist um, in Milwaukee, daring to make a living um, from the art that I do, I needed to hear that then. And it's helped me with other rejections that I've had since then. So I thought about what, make, what other things make me taboo. Well, I'm Christian, kind of sometimes. <laughs> I have, a, I have a problem with that word sometimes and the people who represent it, um, but I can relate to it. And, and being an artist, that can be difficult. I, I often challenge my employers and my potential employers. It's hard for me to keep my mouth shut. I am a college dropout. I, I left school um, I, I became pregnant as a teenager in college, and, um, and I, don't, I don't usually tell a lot of people that, although it's public knowledge. I, I left school, and that's something you don't do. You finish school, you get a good job, and you make it happen, and, and I chose not to do that. So being a pregnant teenager who left school, who, but still continued to dare to be an actor, um, I believe makes me taboo. Believing that I could play a role that was created and designed for a white woman or someone who did not look like me. I dared not to throw away or diminish any parts of me, including my hair, my skin color, my hips, my opinions, or my experiences for the sake of a job. Um, I aired out my dirty laundry often, um, saying when I was struggling emotionally. I took breaks from my career, for my family, for, um, for myself. I said yes. I said yes to, and maybe that's not taboo, but I, I said yes to some very ridiculous things. I made some really unreasonable choices. <laughs> Um, in my life, one being becoming pregnant, uh, another dropping out of school, um, being an actor. Um, I, I was so focused on being an actor that I, that I decided to, that I decided to be a, an intern at the rep. I was given that opportunity. And for an entire year, I made $50 a week as an intern. And this was about 10, 12 years ago. But I was so determined, and I knew that that would be exactly what I needed to help my craft or my skill. Um, and I escaped 53206 physically. In some ways, mentally, I still am getting over um, the experience of living in an area like that, even though I have two parents who have master's degrees. Uh, most of my siblings are educated. Um, living in an area like that, you don't realize until you are able to escape um, the effect that it has on you. So taboo is, taboo is something that I live and I breathe, um, but I've learned to embrace, embrace it. And so I wanted to ask you all or consider, um, ask you to consider a new ways, new ways to look at this word taboo. What is taboo? Um, I think being what is taboo is white racial innocence. Taboo is being colorblind. Taboo, when it comes to the arts, I think is marketing, representing, or serving a group that does not reflect your leadership, um, especially especially if you or your organization has the funds to pay someone. Inserting yourself in a conversation that is not about you. Asserting your privilege because you can. 
not changing because it's hard. Um, just recently, um, someone, some, uh, someone told me, uh, an artist, I read an article about how we can be allies in, in the fight for social justice. And someone, uh, an actor in Chicago mentioned how they like to be um, referred to as the they pronoun, singular they. And I'm like, oh, come on now. This is just, it's too much. It's, it's too much. It's too, it's too difficult for me to change how I talk and how I refer to you. Um, but it's not fair to them. Um, so I've had to, I've had to embrace that. Um, being an artist without purpose, something to fight for. And saying no to yourself and your dreams. Um, I've I've started to write down many things that I've wanted to do with my life. Um, and, and just as the universe, the universe works and God works, um, what you put out there, you receive if you continuously say yes. And a few of those things were directing, um, producing, writing, and those opportunities have come to me because I refused to say no to my dreams. Um, and, and they come to me in the craziest of ways, but my life has been so much richer because of that. And because I didn't accept my taboos as defeat um, or as a setback, but as a push forward to all of my dreams. And so I wanted to um, just end with, ooh, end with a few pictures in my, to showcase my journey as an artist. Um, and and I, I, a couple of days ago, or a couple of weeks ago, I celebrated my 13th show um, in, in Milwaukee. Since I've been back, I was told several years ago, I had locks back then as well, that I'd never work. You would never work if you continue to have locks. And I let that peer pressure, or that pressure, it wasn't even peer, it was um, someone who could hire me. I cut all my hair off. And moving back to Milwaukee four years ago, I decided I am going to grow my locks again, and I don't care, and I'm gonna let them grow. And since then, I've celebrated my 13th show um, in the last couple years doing that. Woo, yes. So this is just a picture of my beautiful, beautiful family, um, my alma mater, Whitefish Bay and Marquette, uh, some happy kids, my kids and my nieces, my family, my husband, he's a taboo as well, but <laughs> I, I, love, I love him dearly. My son over there, I think I was about 20 years old at the time, my partner, welcome to Bronzeville. This is me in Japan, 2009 and 2016, just recently. Holes and a midnight cry. My kids, my beautiful children. Taipei, Taiwan. Um, I dare to, I dare to just go out on a limb, moving to New York with three young kids, my husband and I, and since doing that, I've been able to do some pretty amazing things. It's a Midsummer Night's Dream in Madison. That was two years ago in um, Shakespeare in the Park outside at Reservoir Park. The important work, Artists for Change in Alice's Garden. Some other shows, Color Purple and Crowns and Burying the Bones. Christmas Carol. Um, I had a dream of being on television, and I didn't think it would happen after having three kids and, um, and moving back to Milwaukee, not really a TV town. Um, but that dream came true last September, uh, two in a row. And Dream Girls, years ago, my first show outside of Milwaukee, Good People, and although I am a college dropout, I've been welcomed by other universities to, to do the art that I do. And the next generation, because I dare to say yes and dare to live the taboo life, 
my kids and my nieces and nephews are doing the same. Thank you. <laughs>